Hey, what's going on guys? Jake Cooper back for another video. Today we're going to be creating these awesome explosion elements inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now we're going to be going over a lot of stuff today in a short amount of time, so feel free to go ahead and watch the video again if needed. Now we're going to be using explosion assets off of productioncrate.com. Okay, now I forgot to mention that if you guys do want to get productioncrate.com, please use my link down below. It'll give me a small commission uh, and it really helps me out so I can continue making these tutorials. So if we just come up here to VFX and then come down to explosions and then ground explosions, as you can see, they have a ton of ultimate explosions here. And then they have some free ones down here if you guys would like those. And I'm personally going to be using the ultimate explosions inside of this video. All right, so I just brought my clip back down onto the timeline here. I'm going to right click and do new fusion clip. Okay, now that that's done, let's go right over into fusion. Now, sadly, this can only be done in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve as you need the 3D camera tracker. But you guys can also do it using the planar tracker or just the tracker. I'm just going to be covering the 3D camera tracker as it's going to be a lot easier for this shot. So let's go ahead and drop down an unsharp mask. And what this is going to do, uh, this is good for any type of tracking. It's, if we bring it up, as you can see, it adds uh, a bunch of detail to it. Now this will only work in some situations, but in my testing, it worked good for this shot. So let's do shift space and type camera tracker. Now that we have our camera tracker here, what we want to do is tell it not to track the roof of this car. Okay, so let's just grab down a rectangle mask, uh, put it into the camera tracker and bring it down and extend it uh, past here. I'm just going to do the whole bottom because I don't want the shadow to be tracked either. But how this is working is this is only going to track where the uh, rectangle mask is. So let's go ahead and invert this so now it will track everything above it and outside of it. All right, now in the camera tracker, let's do preview auto track locations. And as you can see, it's going to give us a bunch of points here and they are all outside of our mask. So we can just bring down the minimum feature selection to add some more points. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit auto track. All right, so now that is finished tracking, it went pretty fast. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and solve it. So let's just come over here to the solve and then click solve. That was a great time to shout out the DaVinci Resolve community Discord server. It's a spot that you guys can ask questions about DaVinci Resolve and hopefully get your answers in real time. If you guys head over there, there's also a spot that you guys can share your work and you guys can get feedback on what you've done. So I'd love to see all of the explosions that you guys have added to your videos. We also do video editing competitions. We're just finishing up the first one and we've had a bunch of cool entries. You guys can compete there to win amazing prizes. Link in the description below to where you guys can join that. All right, now that's done, as you can see, we have a solve error of 2.3 pixels. Now that is not that ideal, but it's gonna work for this shot. And what I'm gonna do is come over to the export tab and click export. And now as you can see, we have a 3D scene that it is made for us that we can then take the render and put it into the media out. And now we have our ground plane appearing. So what we're gonna wanna do is remove the unchart mask because that is no longer needed. And we can also move the camera tracker and its mask off to the side for now. All right, so now let's go ahead and get the ground plane lined up. So if we view the merge, uh, the 3D merge, uh, we can pan off. And all these points here are uh, the ground, right? So we want the ground plane to be level with those. So let's come actually and grab down a background and then also do a grid effect. And we're just going to make it so we can see uh, our uh, ground plane a little bit easier because right now it just has the wireframe on. And especially for higher resolution clips, uh, that will become pretty much invisible. So let's just uncheck that. Now it's solid. And if we put the grid effect into here, um, as you can see, uh, it's working, but it's not transparent. So let's just say we come to the background, make it transparent. Well, for some reason, that makes all of the lines disappear as well, even though they work in the grid, okay? So what we're going to do is bring this back so that it is not transparent, then add a luma here, okay? And now that we have the luma here, that will remove the background, and now we will still have all of our lines. It's kind of weird that it doesn't work uh, just having the background transparent, but it doesn't for some reason, so this is the only workaround. Okay, so now let's get a position. So I'm just going to come into the ground plane and drag it up. All right, there we go. And then we will also add some rotation to it. Let's say about like that, okay? And now we can zoom in a little bit and just make sure it is still uh, pretty good. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with these uh, crosses sometimes. So let's come into the point cloud and change this to points, okay? And that will sometimes make it a little bit easier, okay? And what I want to do now is, as you can see over in our viewer, it is really far off in the distance. So let's go ahead and bring this a lot closer, okay? There we go, something like that. We can also make this white now. All right, there we go. And now let's go ahead and play this, okay? And it, as long as your ground plane uh, sticks pretty closely, as you can see it is not, that means that it is not aligned correctly. So let's just come into here, and it looks like it needs to go down a little bit. Or actually, uh, I'm gonna rotate it some. 
So let's just rotate it a little bit. There we go. And now as you can see, that is sticking to the ground a lot nicer. So the nice thing about the ground plane now is if we want to put something in here that casts shadows, we can use this uh, as a solid just by removing this and have this as a shadow mat. I have a video on how to make a shadow mat uh, down in the description, but we do not need that for this purpose. And we'll just use this to help align stuff up. Okay, so let's start grabbing our explosion uh, assets. So I'm just going to grab my first explosion right here, okay? And now if we put this into an image plane and connect it up, we now have it in 3D space. It's going to be way back here, which is going to be pretty far off in the distance. I don't know if we'll be able to see it out here or not. Oh, it's right there actually. But if we grab this, bring it up, okay? So we just want it to be level with the ground plane. So as you can see, now it's really far back. Um, and then we'll just drag it forward, okay? And we'll also have to bring it back down some, uh, but there we go. Let's say we leave it right there. As you can see, it is staying in its correct position, and it's about the spot that I want it to be. And there we go. As you can see, that is looking pretty nice. So something I want to do is make it so you can't see the ground plane in the render, but you can see it over in the 3D space. So let's come into the ground plane, come down to visibility, and then do unseen by camera. And now as you can see, it does just that. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add rest of our explosion assets. So I'm just gonna skip through this as it is going to be the same process. So I have all my explosions put into my node graph here and they're uh, displaced in 3D space here. Okay, and something you wanna do is make sure you guys use unique explosions. As you can see, these are all different and uh, they're not quite the same. If you guys use the same one, it'll look very fake. So that's the nice thing about Production Crate. They offer a ton of unique explosions that are all in very high quality. So now we're gonna go ahead and layer in all of the breaking elements. So I just have this uh, little uh, break animation here, okay? Or like an explosion from the ground, okay? And we're gonna put this in front of all these and then color it to the color of the sand. So let's go ahead and drag this off to the side and then merge these two up. There we go. And now we can view this merge. And as you can see, it is already on top of that. And if we come into the merge now, we can use this to play around with the position that everything is at. And we want the ground to be covering um, or completely in front of the explosion so you can't see the explosion um, at the bottom. That'll just look kind of weird. So I think that looks pretty good. Okay, we're just going to leave it at that for now. And now after the media in, let's just add a color corrector. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and give it like a, a sandish color tint. Okay, so we'll do uh, something, let's find like something like that. Okay. And then we can up the gain a little bit, all right, just to try and color match it as much as possible. There we go, that's looking a lot better, um, and we'll just leave it at that for now. And now we can go ahead and copy this and merge it up on top of all of these other ones. Okay, now what we're going to do is go ahead and offset the time on all of these, okay? So let's just come up on after these, let's add a time speed. And now we just have a delay here, so let's add like a 10 frame delay. Okay, and as you can see, that's going to come back um, to before it had exploded, and there we go. And on the next one, let's also add a time speed, but this time put in 15 frames. And there we go, that is all looking pretty cool. So let's just come ahead in our clip, and as you can see, eventually, um, all these rocks disappear. Okay, and what we want to do is just come into the uh, media ends, and then do hold last frame, okay? And go ahead and bring this up until it goes past the full clip's length, so 86. So once this number up here is higher than 86, we're good. Let's put at 87, okay? And we'll go ahead and do this for all the other ones, so 22 frames. So now all the way into the end, we have our rocks in our scene. And if we look at this, this one doesn't look quite right, so let's go ahead and play around with its uh, settings in 3D space. Let's go ahead and bring this out and come into its image plane and go ahead and get it so that it looks like it is in the correct location. All right, there we go. And I moved it back a little bit, but I like the positioning that it is at now. Now that this is done, let's come back to the edit page and let this red line turn blue and it'll be ready for a completely smooth playback. That way we can get a preview just to make sure all the tracks are looking good and the timing is correct. All right, now this is rendered. Let's go ahead and play that. And as you can see, the tracks on the ones on the sides aren't looking that good. So we can go ahead and play around with that. Let's come into Fusion, come into our uh, Merge. And now let's come to the Point Cloud and then just bring the size down, okay? Make them a little smaller. Now if we come up to them, as you can see, uh, all these explosions are a little uh, low. So let's just come up and raise them up a little bit. Okay, so just bring that up. And that should uh, greatly improve... Um, where the positioning. 
Alright, I'm not gonna play around with this too much just because I already have my completed effect, but you guys gotta get it so that the track is perfect, otherwise it will not look uh, realistic. So now that this is done, come after the camera tracker, add in a color corrector, and you guys can add any type of gray that you guys want to give the film any kind of look that you guys are looking for. Alright everyone, well thanks for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, please give it a like and also comment down below if you guys have any questions for me. Make sure you guys subscribe so you never miss out on a new upload and I'll see you guys next time for another video.